Welcome to the Earning Freedom Program. I am Michael Santos with michaelsantos.com and I'm really thrilled to be presenting this program to Resort Advisory Group. They're an extraordinary group that focuses on helping to cancel timeshare contracts for people who have been victimized by misrepresentations. And they've become a leader in their industry. I'm really thrilled to be able to create this program for them, for their, really for their team, to show their team members what does it really take to overcome struggle? What does it really take to be the CEO of one's own desk? That's a subject that I know something about because I've gone through a lot of challenges and struggles and those challenges and struggles are really identifiable to anybody who's gone through them themselves. And I know a lot of the people who come to Resort Advisory Group sometimes may feel that struggle. I mean, they're, they're faced with a pretty difficult, challenging task. Every day, they got to get up in the morning. They got to feel the energy. They got to find that strength to come through and do what? Make a bunch of cold calls to people who don't really want to take those calls. That's not fun. That's not easy. It doesn't have to be. And if you're only thinking about making those cold calls, then all you're going to feel and fear is this possibility of rejection, something that you don't want to deal with, right? But there, there's really a strategy to break through that barrier. There really is a strategy to break through some of those challenges of, of dealing with objections of people who don't want to talk to you or people who tell you, I don't have the money, I can't afford it. And the reality is, where are you going to go to get that information on how to overcome that struggle? Where are you going to search, right? It's important for me to share this strategy with you so that I can get buy-in from you and tell you the lessons that I am providing to you aren't just some lessons that you might get. Like, for example, when you go to, a, when you go to a book a tour, for example, you want to go on a trip. I'm going to use an analogy here. If you, want to, if you want to make something in your life, you want to go on a trip with your family, you got two places maybe that you can go to get, get information. One of them might be from a travel agent, right? Travel agent sits at a desk, they show you a bunch of brochures, they tell you what's on the brochures, what you can expect. That's one way of getting it. Another way of getting information is to go to a tour guide, somebody who's actually been there, somebody who's actually walked those same mountains, gone through those same challenges. Well, if you're going to get information on how to overcome the challenges of a career that's doing what? Picking up the phone every day. What do you want to do? You want to listen to somebody who's done it or somebody who hasn't? Well, I'm telling you, I'm not an individual who's ever made a living on the phone, but I am an individual who's gone through the same type of struggle that you go through every day, and I do know the path to prosperity. That's what I'm here to, show, to share with you because I know that you didn't come to Resort Advisory Group because you want to answer the phone. You came to Resort Advisory Group because you wanted to end this life of struggle, this life of difficulty, this life of living from paycheck to paycheck. You are on the path to prosperity. And you may be living in struggle right now, but the reality is there's a way through it. And what I'd like to do today is share with you the strategy that worked for me, the strategy that got me through struggle. Because I am absolutely convinced that what worked for me will work for anyone. But I'm not going to ask you to do one thing that I don't do. I'm not going to ask you to do one thing that I didn't do to get, make it through struggle. I'm not going to ask you to do one thing that I am not currently doing today. Why? Because I am absolutely convinced this is the path to prosperity. It's a path that you can use. It's a path that I use. And if you want to do more than just answer the phone, if you want to be looking at more than what you're going through right now, then I suggest you tune in and listen. But I got to earn your trust. Because I'm, again, I'm not going to be some guy here as a travel agent just telling you what to do. I'm going to tell you what I did. I'm going to tell you what worked for me. And I can tell you right now, I'm a guy that made different decisions from any of you when I was a young man. I'm a guy that made every bad decision a guy could possibly make. So when I'm saying that I want to earn your trust, I got to reveal the background to you. And that's me that you see on that slide right there. That's me in the background. When I was 20 years old, I started making some bad decisions. Why? Because I saw that character that stand, that's, that's uh, featured to the right of me, uh, or at least the right of me from my view of this slide. Uh, Tony Montana, some of you may have known, he was that guy in that movie Scarface where he said, in this country, first you get the, first you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the woman. All right? So I, I took that. I took that strategy not as something that was a guidance for entertainment, but rather I looked at that as a blueprint to life. And it had some, some pretty serious consequences for me. And I think that those consequences are relevant because right now you may be feeling, living in a life where you're living from paycheck to paycheck, where you're struggling every day, where you don't know, you know what's going to happen on the other end of that call. You might have to make 100 phone calls before you get one person who even wants to talk to you. And sometimes that can feel like a struggle. So I want to share with you, what did I do to get through those kind of struggles? And I had to start inside of an environment that wasn't so easy. I mean, take a look at that picture. 
Imagine picking yourself up every day and finding the, the energy when you're living in an environment like that with nothing but steel cages and steel doors and people poking their finger at you telling you where you can sleep, what you can eat, when you can eat, when you can go to the bathroom, you know, keeping you away from the people you love and the people who love you. That, my friends, is a recipe for extinguishing hope. But I can tell you something. There's always a path to break it through, break through that hope. And that's something that I learned while going through my own journey, my own struggles. My question for you is, are you living in a prison right now? Are you living in a prison with your own thoughts telling you what you can't do? Are you looking at things and dreaming and say those types of good things never happen to me, they only happen to other people? Because that can really be a prison. I can tell you since I came back to society, and I have only been back in society for less than three years, I can tell you I've met many people who are in a far bigger prison than I ever lived, even though I lived in prison for 26 consecutive years. You see, there's a path to break through struggle. And that path doesn't happen by accident. You got to know how to break the chains and figure out how am I going to muster the strength from within and come into work every single day with an absolute commitment that says, I'm going to crush it. I'm not just here to make phone calls. I'm not just here to dial numbers. I am here to deliver because this is my path to prosperity. This is my path to breaking free. And so since I know what got me through that challenge, I'm whole, I, I feel really passionate about showing other people what strategies work for me. And it really all begins by truly understanding the culture in which I, I, I'm in. Understand your current environment. When I, in my environment, I knew what was going on in there. There were gangs. There was rebellion. There was negativity every single day. And if I listened to that, rebellion. If I listened to those gangs, if I listened to that negativity, I understood and I knew that there wouldn't be any path for me other than what I saw around me. And that's a quite good, good suggestion for you. If you don't do anything differently from what you've been doing in the past, how is your life in the future going to change? See, life changes when we begin to ask questions, when we begin figuring out what can we do differently. When I went into that environment, everybody around me was telling me the main thing I had to do is forget about the world outside and just survive in the prison experience. And they gave pretty clear examples about what does it take to survive in prison. You know the recipe was to survive in prison as far as many of the people around me? It was to have a ball of hate in your stomach and a knife. You see, people in prison, they were too focused and too obsessed on the short term. They were too focused and obsessed on just building an image inside of the prison world. That's not a recipe for success. To take a recipe for success, you've got to look at the leadership around you. And you guys are surrounded by some awesome leadership. Look at your team. Your team member knows how to start something from nothing and build it into something awesome that employs how many? Not one, two, three, but dozens of people and also provides you with the promise, not for $10 an hour, but for six figures a year. The reality is, to get those six figures a year, you got to do something different. You got to do something different than simply answering the phone or dialing numbers. You got to make your passion and your energy show with every word that crosses your lips. You got to be able to show that regardless of where you come from, you are here to solve people's problems. And when you solve people's problems, that's when you start advancing your own life. As Zig Ziglar, one of the great sales trainers used to say, he said, solve it up enough problems for other people and you're going to be able to solve every problem in your own life. That's really what you came to Resort Advisory Group to do, solve other people's problems. And it's the same thing that I had to do when I was starting off in that journey. And that journey was one that I didn't really understand when I was 20 years old. When I was 20 years old, I walked into the prison system. I'd never known anything about it. I was facing a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. But fortunately, after I was convicted, I started to look at leadership. And that leadership led me to learn from masterminds. And that's why this course that I call the Resort Advisory Group Mastermind Course is really the lessons that I learned from masterminds, lessons that I learned from leaders who taught me how to make decisive decisions, not to waver, who, who to conf figure out challenges and how to overcome those challenges, how to build teams together, how to be creative and looking at problems and figuring out what I could do, how to muster the motivation myself 
every single day, no matter how many days or weeks or months or years or decades would pass, always focus on the vision of what I wanted to create rather than the struggle of where I was. That's the vision of leadership. But I didn't really grasp it at the earliest stages. In fact, it wasn't until, you know, I was asking God for guidance to get me through this journey after I was convicted that I was exposed to this story of Socrates. Now, this isn't a course on philosophy, but I can't move forward without sharing with you what I learned from masterminds. And those masterminds lived thousands of years ago. Some of them live today. But I'm going to tell you what I learned from Socrates and why I could identify with him. See, I could identify with Socrates because he was in a jail cell. He was locked in a jail cell, not for selling cocaine, but rather he was locked in a jail cell because at that time in society, it was against the law from people who, from people who lived it as an elite class, the high class, to teach people in the low class. It was against the law. But Socrates believed that every human being had power. Every human being had worth. Every human being had value. And so he wanted to teach every human being how to reach his or her highest potential. But it was against the law. Well, the authorities came and they arrested Socrates. And when they arrested him, they later convicted him and they sentenced him to death. So I could identify with Socrates because I saw him as somebody who was like me. He was somebody who was in struggle. He was somebody who was in a jail cell. Well, none of you have made the types of bad decisions that I made. I mean, you didn't go to prison for the length of time that I went to prison for. But you may be living in a job that doesn't provide you with all the resources that you need, and you may want to have more, and so that also can feel like a struggle. So I hope that you can see that if I can get through 26 consecutive years in federal prisons of every security level and come back strong with my dignity intact, those strategies could work for you as well. So here's what I learned from Socrates. You see, Socrates had a visitor while he was in his jail cell. That visitor, his name was Crito. Crito came to Socrates and he said, look, don't worry about it. You're not going to die. You don't have to do this sentence. There's a lot of people who love you and care for you. In fact, I have the jailer. He's going to open the cell for you a little later this afternoon. We're going to walk out of here and your, your sponsors are going to support you. You can live the rest of your life in peace. Sounded good to me. That's all that I wanted when I was living in that jail cell was just to get out. But Socrates, he listened and he said, no, thanks. I'm going to stay. He just said, what? You're going to stay. Why would you stay? You're going to die. And Socrates said, yes, I'm going to die. Critus says, well, why would you do that? Socrates says, well, you see, I live in a democracy. And in a democracy, I've got to take the good with the bad. I've taken all the good that society has given me. It's clothed me. It's fed me. It's educated me. Those are good things. I've got to take the bad. So this is a bad law. But I would rather be a man of principle, a man who dies for what he believes in than somebody who runs away from problems that he created. You see, in a democracy, I have the right to work to change laws I don't agree with. I don't have the right to break laws. I broke the laws because in principle, I believe that every human being has value and I was willing to die for that principle. Well, I'll tell you, when I read that story, I'll still remember today, taking that book, putting it on my chest, lying back on my jail cell and thinking, wow, I really messed up. What could I do different? What could I do to be more like a mastermind, more like Socrates? And the real question, and this is what's important for you to understand, I think, the real question is that we've got to stop thinking about what challenges we have and start thinking about how we can add value to the broader community, to the broader society. Now, I didn't know how to do that when I was in prison. In fact, I hadn't even been sentenced yet. I was just sitting there staring at the ceiling, thinking about people like you, people who have the courage to get up every morning and come to a job, pick up the phone, dial numbers, and try and connect with human beings. I had to think about you. I had to think about, is there anything that I can do, anything at all, that would cause people to see me as something other than a kid who started selling cocaine when he was 20 years old, a kid who was facing a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole? And in my case, I can tell you what the answer was. It was, yes, there probably is something that I can do. I just don't know what it is yet. And the reality was, if I continue to learn from masterminds, the reality was it didn't matter what I thought. What mattered is what you thought. What mattered is what taxpaying citizens thought. So this strategy is really what guided me through the journey. And so as I was sitting inside of that prison cell, 
traumatized somewhat from the reality that I was going to be separated from so many people for so many years. I hadn't even been sentenced yet. I just started to think about every decision that brought me to prison. You see, it really wasn't just that I sold cocaine. The decisions for me started many years before. They started with the people I associated with. They started with the activities that I pursued. All of that led me more inclined to, getting, to engage myself in types of the types of behavior that limited my opportunities for growth, that limited my opportunities for success. And that's a question that you might ask yourself. Where are you right now in your career? Where are you? Are you where you want to be? Are you driving the car that you want to drive? Are you living in the house where you want to live? Are you living in some type of struggle because you can't give your family the resources that you'd like to give them? Well, the question that you have to ask is the same type of questions that I had to ask. How did I get here? Could I have done different decisions? Could I have made different decisions differently 10 years ago? Had I made different decisions differently 10 years ago, would that have had a different outcome? You see, there's an old Chinese proverb. It says, the greatest time to plant an oak tree is 20 years ago. The second greatest time is today. I could have made different decisions when I was 15, when I was 12. And had I made those decisions differently, probably when I was 20, I wouldn't have seen a movie like Scarface and figured this was a blueprint to happiness. I would have recognized it as a recipe for disaster. You can do the same thing today. Think back. Where were you five years ago? Where were you 10 years ago? What could you have done differently? They have a different outcome from where you are right now. More importantly, what can you do differently today that will position you for the success that you want in one year, five years, 10 years? Answer that question and you will be living the path of a mastermind. So when I was in there, I had to think about what got me there, but I also had to think about how I wanted to emerge. And my secret sauce, my secret recipe was to think about leadership like the leadership you're working around right now. Leaders you may know, leaders you may not know. Look at them. Figure out what are they doing? How are they thinking? How are they thinking differently from the way that I think, the way that I thought that put me into prison? I'll tell you a story that one of my masterminds taught me. Is it, his his uh, name is Rob Sherry. Rob Sherry is a guy that works for a good friend of mine who has a phenomenally successful lumber company in Northern California. The company does $500 million a year. It employs more than 500 people. And Rob Sherry is currently the CEO of that company. But he didn't start that way. He started that way when he was 15 years old. And he happened to be in the same neighborhood as the CEO of that company, the owner of that company. And he told him, hey, look, I want to start a new uh, product at your lumber yard. It's Golden State Lumber is the name of the company. And he said, what I'd like to do is I, I found these cool crab forts and I want to sell them at your lumber yard. Can I, can you mind if I put these up on a box and, and your lumber yard and so the contractors come, they could buy the crab forks. I'll split the revenues with it. And the CEO listened and laughed and he said, we're a lumber yard. We service contractors selling tools and boards and wood and nails and all the things for the construction industry. We don't sell crab forks. He said, I know, but it's a good idea, and, I, and I'm going to split the money with you. And the CEO laughed, and he said, well, you want to sell crab forks at my lumber yard? He said, I don't care. Go ahead and do it. And so it's kind of like a kid starting a lemonade stand. And the, day, the first day he started the crab fork thing, they sold out that day. All the, the contractors bought the crab forks. Lee laughed so hard. He said, I can't believe you did that. He said, that's pretty awesome. He gave him a job. Now it was a grunge job, terrible job. He was 15 years old. He was moving lumber around the lumber yard, just getting slivers in his hands. He was doing terrible. He hated his job, but he stuck with it. And Lee loved this kid. Lee said to his other employees, you know why this guy has a job here? He has a job here because he brought me crab forks. He thinks differently. He's thinking about what's the next thing that we can do to grow. And as a consequence of the way that Rob thought and his work ethic, and his ability, willingness to do whatever it took to be the best in the world that he could do, 15 years later, when he was 30 years old, he became CEO of that very lumber company. And I interviewed him on this show, this Earning Freedom show, because I like to learn from leaders. You see, what Rob told me is that just as the same strategy that got me through prison is the same strategy that led him to being now the CEO of a company that does $500 million a year. He doesn't have a high education. All he has is an ability to think differently. He didn't think about what he wanted to do. He thought about his CEO first. He didn't think about what, having to go out there and move lumber around and getting sliver in his hand and a terrible job for a minimum wage. He thought about how can I add value to this company 
and to the customers it serves. And by operating from that mindset, he was able to advance and advance and advance and advance. And now he's 30 years old, making millions of dollars a year, employing 500 people. And my question for you is, what's different? What's different from you, from Rob Sherry? Nothing. There is nothing stopping you from being the best in the world at what you can do. But you know how it all begins? It begins by not focusing, I've got to be picking up the phone, but focus on the value that you can provide to Resort Advisory Group and think about the value that you are going to provide to the customers that you serve. Because when you feel that, it's going to ooze out of your pores. Every lip, every word that comes across your lips, your customers on the other phone, they may not see you with their eyes, but they will see you with their ears. And that's more powerful. Think about those people and think about how you can serve them. That's what got me through the journey. I thought about you. I thought about every law-abiding citizen in society and said, what can I do to connect with those people? I called those people my avatars. Rob Sherry called Lee Knobman his avatars. Later, the contractors that he served, his avatars. People that he doesn't know, but people that he wants to serve. And then begins with the question, how can I do better? What can I do better? You see, if you ask that question, the next question is going to follow, and it's about how do you build trust? How do you become so authentic that people see you and they know you're for real? When they know you're for real, they want to follow you. They want to believe in you. So I had to figure that out when I was in that jail cell, and I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you what I did to become transparent that way. You see that picture on the screen up there? That's not the real newspaper. I just used my Photoshop skills to draft a newspaper. The, the internet didn't exist back then, so that, it, inter, that uh, newspaper is lost. But that, I was convicted in the Western District of Washington. And the Seattle newspaper at that time published a front page news story about my, about my journey. And the reason they published that front page newspaper story was because after I had this epiphany, after I read about Socrates, I took the same resource that every one of you has, you know what it is? I don't have one here on my desk, but it's a simple pencil and a piece of paper. And I wrote a letter to the newspaper. I said, you guys covered my trial. I just wrote about maybe in a drug kick pen. I made a lot of bad decisions. I want to do better. If you'd like to hear the whole story, just come and visit me. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to use every day that I serve in prison as a building block to build a better life and to contribute to society in meaningful, measurable ways. And that letter resulted in the journalist coming to visit me. He interviewed me, and he published this front-page news report. Kingpin reformed, question mark. Now, when you read a story like that, convicted drug dealer in prison saying it's going to change his life, what are you thinking? Probably looking at it kind of cynically. Probably looking at it and saying, yeah, right. He's just saying that because he got caught. And I understood that. I understood that I was in trouble. I understood that you know, nobody was going to believe it. It didn't matter. I wanted to draw my line in the sand. I wanted to say that today is the day that I stop making bad decisions that keep me in the criminal justice system and I start making good decisions. Today is the day that I'm going to start working toward being the best that I can in the society. I, today is the day that I'm going to do whatever it takes to become successful. So I wrote the letter, sent it to the, the newspaper, came and interviewed me. I then go to sentencing, and I'll remember, never forget what the prosecutor said at that sentencing hearing. He said, if Michael Santos spends every day of his life in an all-consuming effort to repay society, and if he lives to be 300 years old, our society will still be at a significant net loss. Now, I'll never forget that sentence. Why? Because it let me know the environment in which I was going into, an environment that extinguishes hope, an environment that tells me that I can never be anything more than the bad decisions I made as a young man. But that's not true. You see, an individual can always overcome, can always become something more than past bad decisions. An individual can always become more than a minimum wage employee and become a six-figure or seven-figure earner. But it doesn't happen by accident, and it doesn't happen by happy talk. It takes a deliberate plan. It takes an individual who can visualize success, craft a plan, and then execute that plan every single day. That's what the Mastermind course is all about. That's what I want you to follow at Resort Advisory Group. I want every single day you to go into that environment and say, what am I going to do to be the best in the world at what I can be? When you start asking questions like that, you can begin 
to start seeing things. You see, and it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to see what you can do to become better. It's not easy to be like the masterminds who've lived before us. But one of those masterminds that I read about, his name is Jim Collins. He's an author. He wrote a book called Good to Great, how companies go from being good to great. And I can tell you, they don't do it without people like you. They don't do it without staff members like the ones who are at Resort Advisory Group who are built, mustering up the energy and picking up the phone and calling these people day after day after day, even though they may face rejections, even though they may get objections from customers, they never stop. They've always got the right attitude. They've always got the energy. And what happens is this is like spinning a flywheel, Jim Collins said. To become a great company, you've got to continuously motivate. You've got to continuously inspire your team. He said it's not hard. It's not easy. So you've got to, it's like spinning a flywheel. So you imagine a big concrete disc that's sitting on, on a, a pedestal. It's sitting on a spindle. Now, to get that disc to start spinning, it takes, it's hard at first. You've got to push. You've got to drive energy into it. But eventually, it starts getting a momentum of its own, right? If you guys would have come to Resort Advisory Group a couple of years ago before it existed, it was really hard. But now you guys got some momentum. Why? Because you got a track record. You got the Better Business Bureau authenticating you. You've got a history of showing hundreds of people who you've been successful in canceling their contracts. You've got all the team members around you. You've got the back of the house with, with Bonnie and Aurora. You've got, you've got Aaron and you've got uh, Eric and you've got Ty. And you've got so many people there willing to help you. You've got, you got Bo and you've got James and you've got Barry. You've got all of this talent around you. You see, this flywheel's already spinning. Your job is to continue to keep that, that wheel spinning, right? And Jim Collins says that things get easier as you get better. You just got to continually working to get better. In fact, he gave a recipe that he called the BHAG. The BHAG, kind of an odd word, but what it means is a big, hairy, audacious goal. That's what he defined as a BHAG, right? And he said a, a big, hairy, audacious goal, we find it by doing what? We've got to find something that we can be extremely passionate about, okay? We've got to find something that we really love doing. We've got to find something that we can be the best in the world at doing. We've got to find something that will drive our economic engine. And in the center, where you take these three rings, right, and where they all intersect at the same spot, as you see there on the graph, that is the center where we find our big, hairy, audacious goal. So I tell you I learned from masterminds. When I was locked up inside of that prison cell, I had to be thinking about what can be my big, hairy, audacious goal? What can I be passionate about? What can I work so hard at that I'll be the best in the world at achieving? What can I do that will possibly drive my economic engine someday, even though I'm starting inside of a long prison journey? Well, in my case, it was thinking about my avatars. It was thinking, as I learned from Rob Sherry, who, who thought about the CEO of his company and the customers that he was serving, what could he do to be better? It was the same as I was thinking about Socrates, who didn't think about his own death sentence, but instead he thought about being a man of principle. Okay, it's as I do right now, you know, what, what, what I'm doing right now is trying to provide value for people. When I was in prison, that was the vision that I had. It's that someday I'm going to come back to society and I'm going to want to help other people find what they're passionate about. I want to find other people and, and, and show them how they can be the best in the world at something. I want to earn a living from this so it can drive my economic engine and that way I can continue working at it every day and refining my skill and I'm going to continue practicing because I believe why? I'm going to get better if I do that. I have to think about my avatars. That's what I have to think about to get through this journey. I have to think about what will they want from me. And I can tell you by asking those questions, I came across with a three-pronged approach. Those people would want me to, if, I, if they were going to give me another shot, if they were going to give me this shot of achieving my big, hairy, audacious goal, then I would need to prove worthy of their support. I would need to educate myself. I would need to contribute to society in meaningful, measurable ways. I would need to build a strong support network. If I could do that, focus on educating myself, focus on contributing to society, focus on building a support network, it might be easier for people to believe in me. My question for you is what plan do you have? What can you be doing right now to make you so much more than somebody who's just picking up the phone? and dialing numbers, cold calling people who may, who may not be receptive to that call. What can you do 
to make you the best in the world at what you do? What can you do today that can make you feel passionate about what you're doing? What can you do today that will really drive your economic engine? I don't mean drive it in such a way that you're getting a paycheck. I mean drive it in such a way that you can do anything you want to do, that you can live in the house that you envision for your family, that you can drive the vehicle that you envision for your family, that you can provide financial stability so that your house is built on a found, rock solid foundation. What can you do? Like I tell you, there are a lot of things that you can do. And that's simply by just thinking about the tools at your disposal. The tools at your disposal are what? Vocabulary. That's one. Develop your vocabulary because if you can string more words into sentences and sentences into paragraphs and paragraphs into stories, and if you can convey those words and sentences and paragraphs and stories with a high level of energy, people are going to respond to you. And if people respond well to you, guess what? You're going to have more sales. And if you have more sales, guess what? That's going to influence your commissions. You see, that's what it's all about. It's about building tools. It's about building your resources. It's about building as much as you can possibly build to achieve your highest potential, to truly deliver for your customers. Take a look at that carpenter on there. What has he got? Look at all the tools he has. He has a crowbar. He has a saw. He has a, a, a hammer on his belt. He's got a screwdriver. He's got all these tools, right? And he's probably got a drill and he's got a pencil in his ear. And, you know, he's just, he, he's, he, he loads himself up with tools, right? I mean, there's a lot of ways to build a house. Maybe he could just do it all with that hammer, right? The hammer can drive a nail, turn it around, maybe chop it a lot. It can uh, break boards up and, and get, it, get it in place to, so, some kind of way that he wants. But the reality is the more tools he has, the easier his job becomes. And as you, what are you? At the end of the day, you're a professional communicator. You're helping people understand how they can resolve a potential problem. That's your job. What do you need? You need to develop your tools. Use your resources. Write down your script. Commit it to memory. Have a thousand variations. You develop your vocabulary so that you know how to string words together more confidently, so that you know how to respond to every potential objection that you receive. Practice. And when you do so, you will find that you're building your own ladder, a ladder that will deliver you to the prosperity you deserve, a ladder that will deliver you to the success the resort advisory group ex expects from you. That's the reason it invested in you. Somebody saw something in you and said, I'm going to invest the time and the energy to train this individual. I'm going to invest the time and the energy to make sure that this individual has a real opportunity to achieve his or her highest potential. I'm going to do whatever it takes to help this person achieve the goals that that individual aspires to achieve. But you, each individual, is responsible for your own destiny. You have to take this opportunity and do everything within your power to become the best in the world, to bring that passion every single day, to Make sure that you are doing whatever it takes so that you're not earning $10 an hour or minimum wage or $12 an hour or whatever it is, but you are earning the resources that allow you to achieve prosperity. It's all about casting lines, doing everything you possibly can. Learn from the, from the leaders that are sitting around you. Surround yourself with leadership. Ask the right types of questions and be persistent. Never give up. Never stop pushing. Never stop driving toward that success that is destined for you. That's what got me through the journey. I told you in my case, I thought about my avatars. They would want me to educate myself. And despite my having to live inside of an environment that seemed to extinguish hope, of prison bars and concrete walls and, you know, negativity and gang violence, I had to focus. I had to be persistent. I had to deal with rejection. And because of that focus, I was able to further this goal of earning my education and getting an undergraduate degree from Mercer University and a master's degree from Hofstra University. With regard to contributing to society, I had to think about how could I do that? And in my case, the answer was in publishing. 
writing books, and you see just a few of the books that I wrote while I was incarcerated, you can see that. That didn't happen by accident. It happened because I was persistent, because I was able to focus on the vision of what I wanted to become rather than the struggle which I was enduring at that given moment. You can see that through that process, I not only built a support network of thousands and then tens of thousands of people, I even met the love of my life while locked inside of a prison cell. We married more than 12 years ago in 2003 inside of the visiting room of a federal prison. And despite my being in prison for 10 more years before I could ever spend a, an evening with her, we were able to nurture that marriage and grow closely together. Now, you can take my word for it. You can actually look at the media because I'm 100% authentic, 100% transparent. In fact, let me play this video for you that shows a, co uh, uh, a composition of, of news articles from the PBS NewsHour and the NBC News. Just take a look and watch this, watch this three-minute video and you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about. Next, one man's effort to turn prisoners' lives around just as he did his own. That sounds a bit like a movie, which fits, because Michael Santos's story begins with the movie Scarface. It was just the beginning of an amazing story of crime, punishment, and redemption. Santos was just 23 when he was convicted of trafficking cocaine in 1987. He served 26 years in federal prisons. From the moment he arrived in prison, he began preparing himself for the day he'd be released, even if it was decades away. You've got to be able to say, I make a 100% commitment to rejecting the criminal lifestyle. I make a 100% commitment to preparing for success upon release. But before Michael was even sentenced, before he spent a single of those 9,500 nights in prison, Michael made one very good decision. He picked up a philosophy book and learned about Socrates. He reached out to leading scholars of criminal justice at places like Stanford and Princeton, some of whom were impressed enough to become mentors. Over the years, Santos earned undergraduate and master's degrees and wrote seven books about the criminal justice system, all from inside prison walls. Professors around the country began adding his works to their courses. But I have a role and a duty to show others how to prepare, how to come back strong. I have a duty to work to help the formerly incarcerated transition into the labor market. A Silicon Valley executive impressed by Santos's work invited him to speak at an annual conference. We may call it a system of corrections, but in reality, it is a system that warehouses humanity. Michael Santos is a great example of somebody who took advantage of an opportunity that he had while he was incarcerated. Santos is getting his message out in other ways as well. He's also a lecturer at San Francisco State University, teaching a course called The Architecture of Incarceration. In just its second semester, it's become hugely popular with criminal justice majors, some squeezing onto empty floor spaces. One of my favorite parts about this story, he wrote the books. He made money while in prison and paid taxes, I'll tell you. He came out of prison with $100,000. You see, all, anything can happen after struggle. Anything can happen, regardless of where you come from, what decisions you've made in the past. Anything can happen. As you heard on the video, you can see where my first job was. It was at the San Francisco State University that hired me to be a professor only three weeks after I concluded 26 years in federal prison. It's all about creating opportunities. It's about jumping from the small pond you're in right now and advancing the bigger pond where you want to build your prosperity, where you want to build your life. It doesn't happen by focusing on the immediate gratification, but rather focus on what you can become. Focus on what you can be passionate about. I'd love to say that these are all my ideas, but the reality is that, you know, one of my mentors, Steve Jobs, as you see on the screen there, one of my mentors said that good artists copy ideas, but great artists steal ideas. And all I did was steal ideas from leadership. Leadership like the people who are working with you at Resort Advisory Group. All of those individuals had this path. That's why they became successful. And I wanted to become successful, so I followed their path. I followed something that I could find my purpose in life. 
And as I was going through prison, I always felt this is going to be my purpose to show people that regardless of what struggle, what challenges you face today, you can always become more. When you do that, that is when we as a society grow. That is when we as a society become prosperous. That's when we as individuals reach our highest potential. And I look for stories all around me that I can find. And one of the stories that helps me is this story of, of this, this father who wanted to discipline his child. Okay? The father took his child out to this tree. There's a big boulder by the tree. The father says to his son, Son, your punishment is I want you to move that boulder away from that tree. And the son looks at the boulder and says, yeah, massive boulder. says, hey, how am I going to do that? I said, that's your punishment. Figure it out. So the son gets out of his dad's pickup and he goes over to the truck. And he just starts pushing, pushing that boulder, trying to get it to move. Boulder doesn't budge. Kid's still thinking. He goes back of his pickup. He pulls a big crowbar out of his dad's truck and pries it under the boulder. Boulder uses all his right, tries to, tries to force it up. Boulder doesn't move. Pulls a rope out, loops it around the branch, ties it around the, the, the boulder, tries to use leverage. Boulder doesn't move. Kid comes back and tells his dad, Dad, that, that boulder's not moving. I tried everything. Father says, no, son, you didn't try everything. So what didn't I try? So you saw me. I, I did everything I could. I, I used the crowbar, the rope, I, I pushed. It didn't move. Didn't try everything, son. Dad, kid says, dad, what didn't I try? Father said, you didn't ask for help. If you want to achieve your highest potential, you've got to ask for help. You got to ask for help from all the leaders who are around you. You got to ask for help from the winners who are around you. You got to figure out what can you do to be the best in the world at your position. Because if you can figure that out, you are going to advance to a higher position. None of us learn as if we're an island. We all are connected. We all can grow together. That's what the purpose of the mastermind course is, is to learn from masterminds. And you are surrounded by masterminds at Resort Advisory Group. You are surrounded by people who at one time or another were also in struggle, but they figured out a way to make it through. Ask them for help. Ask them for guidance. You see, we're all building foundations. To give a little sample of that, take a look at this video that I filmed a couple of months ago. See, there's a hotel right outside of the office where I work. Actually, a, a rendering of a hotel. But before there's that hotel, there's a lot of work that goes into building it as I show, I try to illustrate in this short video. I'm making videos today for the Earning Freedom Mastermind program. I'm here in an office where I work and I'm on the fifth floor of a pretty big building in Irvine, California. And outside my window, you can see the development that's being made. They're, they're building a new hotel out there. And I was standing out there, I was struck by the amount of, of, of planning that goes into putting up a building. You see every one of those trenches, there's a reason for it. You see every one of those pipes, there's a reason for why it's there. And that's the same message I try to teach the people through our Earning Freedom Mastermind program, that every decision they make, there should be a purpose for it. There should be a reason for it. And if we follow that path, that's what's going to lead us to success. That's what leads people from where they are to where they want to go, where they want to go. Somebody is thinking about that building right now and thinking about how they could turn that piece of dirt into an extraordinary hotel. And in about a year, we're going to see that hotel there. But right now it's just dirt and there are trenches and there are pipes going in and they know where they're going to pour the concrete and they know why that, that equipment is there and they know why all of that, those supplies are there. But it's going to look differently in a year from now, just like an individual's life can look differently. It doesn't happen by accident. It requires a deliberate action plan. That's what we teach at the Earning Freedom Mastermind Program. Thank you. I'm Michael Santos with michaelsantos.com. Bye-bye. Okay. So what are we talking about? We're talking about asking questions about how do I build the foundation in my life so that I can become the enormous success that I am destined to become. We've got to ask questions. We've got to ask the right types of questions. I had to do the same thing. I, did, I told you I will never ask you to do anything that I don't do, that I didn't do, that I'm not currently doing. It's all about, success is all about asking the right questions, surrounding yourselves and putting yourself in the proximity of prosperity. When I got out of prison, I set a new three-pronged path saying, this is what I'm going to do to achieve my objective during the first five years since coming release. And I got released with a zero, zero, zero credit score. 
But I said, in my first five years, I'm going to make my first million dollars. How am I going to do it? I'm going to do it by focusing on helping more people who are living in struggle become successful. I'm going to create programs for people in prison so that they can learn how to become successful regardless of where they are. I'm going to create employment opportunities so that people with criminal backgrounds can transition into the labor market. I am going to create more awareness so that more people in society will understand how and why we should, as a society, make improvements to our criminal justice system. All of those, that three-pronged path was going to advance me to the goal that I set. The more people I could help, the more opportunities I would have to enhance my own life. You see, we're all connected. And this is all about a team effort, about building stronger teams, building stronger communities. And who's on my team? Every American citizen, every individual who wants to become more successful. That's why I created the Mastermind Program. Now, initially, I created it specifically for people who are in prison, for at-risk youth, for anybody who just got out of prison, people going into prison. But you'll see what I did here. I created a course called Earning Freedom Mastermind Course. What am I telling I'm teaching the same lessons that got me through the journey. I published another book, Success After Prison, How I Built Assets Worth a Million Dollars Within Two Years of My Release from 26 Years Inside. More importantly, how you can succeed too. And this book is free. You can get a copy of the digital version of it anyway just by visiting my website or taking a look at my Facebook page called Earned Freedom where I write about it. Just enter your email address and one will be sent to you automatically. Or you can order a copy if you want the soft cover copy from Amazon. You can get it from Amazon or from my website. But what I'm sharing in that book is how the decisions I made many, many years ago were like seeds. And then I nurtured those seeds. And then I nurtured those seeds for years and for decades, and they eventually built a garden that bore fruit. And that's what I'm sharing with you, with hopes that you will start sowing seeds for your own garden that bears fruit for the rest of your life. That's what the Earning Freedom Mastermind course is about. If you'd love to have a part of it, then here's the sn snapshot of it. It's all part of, of the story that I have lived since I was locked inside of a prison back in 1987. It is all part of a story that I learned from masterminds. And the story begins with identifying your values. I told you that my case was, I thought about what's going to define me. It's not gonna be the fact that I'm in prison. It's going to be rather how I responded to this prison sentence. And I responded by thinking about the broader community, the broader society, thinking about what would they expect from me. They would expect me to work to educate myself, to contribute to society, and to build a support network. And so that became my value categories. Every step I took was going to advance me along those lines. Then what? Then I had to set very clearly defined goals. And those goals would make it self-evident that I was focusing on education, focusing on contribution, focusing on building a support network, okay? How was my avatars going to define education? University degrees, as evidenced by the ones that I showed you. How were they going to define whether I was contributing to society? In my case, it was publishing. If I was publishing books, clearly, I'm influencing the lives of other people. I'm contributing to society. With regard to building a support network, I wanted to find 10 people who I didn't know prior to my imprisonment and people that didn't know me and persuade them to believe in me. By focusing on that path, I had tens of thousands of people in my support network, just as you can have. Those are the prerequisites to success. Identify your values, set your goals. Once you've done that, you've satisfied those prerequisites, then you embark upon what I call the straight A guide. And the straight A guide begins with attitude. You got to make a 100% commitment to success, not as I define success, but as you define success. If you want to be the best in the world that you, that you say, that you want to be the best in the world at your career, then you got to have a 100% commitment to that success. Number two, and the success is defined by your own values and goals. It makes no difference what anybody else says. It's what you say. Values and goals, identify them, set the goals, make a 100% commitment. Two, the next A in the Straight A Guide is aspiration. You've got to be able to see yourself 
is something more than where you are right now. Not answering the phone, but rather doing something higher. See yourself as the best in the world of what you can become. I don't know what that is. I can tell you for me, the aspiration was while I was going through decades in prison was I would always see myself as I'd be able to put on a suit and tie, go into any room, and nobody would know I served a day in prison unless I told them. And that's what made all the difference for me. That's why I'm so passionate about trying to share that vision with others. What's number three? It's action. You see, none of this matters if you don't take action. You've got to take the incremental action steps that will take you from where you are to where you want to go. And you have to understand that the things that you're doing today are going to be fundamentally different from what you're doing next year, three years, five years from now. You've always got to be growing. You've always got to be building this ladder. You've got to take action. What's number four? Accountability. You've got to hold yourself accountable in accordance with the accountability logs that you establish, not that anybody else establishes. It didn't matter to me what anybody else was thinking. I had my own accountability logs when I was inside, just as you can. You can determine how many people you talk to a day, how many numbers you dial, how you speak to them, how many words you learn, how many objections you train yourself to overcome, how many stories you learn to tell. All of these are skills that are going to advance your life and open more opportunities. But you've got to do it because you have the intrinsic motivation to grow. Next, what is it? You become aware. You have awareness. That's the next A in the straight A guide, awareness. If you are on this path, you are going to become aware of opportunities that you can seize. You're going to become aware of opportunities that will show that you are more and better than anyone else best that you can be. Learn from others. Become aware. What else? The world's going to become aware of you. When the world becomes aware of you, they're going to have a vested interest in your success. That's what I experienced. That's what helped me. Every single person with whom I served time had the same opportunities that I had. The only difference, I was inspired by masterminds. They were locked in a system, allowing that system to dictate their thoughts and actions. How about you? Are you on this path to truly advance your life? If you are, then now is the time to seize that moment and seize that initiative. The next A is achievement. You celebrate every achievement, no matter how small it is. Understand that every book you read on great sales techniques is an achievement. Every time you connect with a customer, that's an achievement. Every time you develop a new strategy to overcome objections, that's an achievement. Celebrate those achievements and pass them along to help your team. Finally, it's appreciation. It's show your gratitude for the blessings that come your way by always striving to be the best in the world at what you can be. That's the program that I created that I have been distributing to jails and prisons. And now I'm just so grateful to Resort Advisory Group for giving me an opportunity to share it with you. And I'd encourage you, take a look at my program. I, I interview successful people, people who've come from struggle. And I have more than 280 of those programs on my Earning Freedom podcast, which is available for free, either through my website at michaelsantos.com or on iTunes or on Facebook page at my Earned Freedom public page. You can listen to phenomenally successful people like my friend Weldon Long, who built a phenomenal training company even though he served three terms in prison. Or my friend Ryan Stuman, the hardcore closer, who, builds, uh, who, who teaches other people how the skill set that got him through prison has made him a phenomenal salesperson that earns more than a million dollars a year. You can tune into my webinars. You can build intrinsic motivation simply by learning that other people have faced struggle and they've overcome, just as you can do if you develop your critical thinking skills, if you develop your ability to assess every problem and every opportunity, solve those problems with making good decisions, analyze every option, learn how to reason and evaluate and figure out how am I going to make the best in the world at what I do. That's when we succeed. That's when we create opportunities. That's what you can do to achieve your highest potential. And I can tell you, although I have been free from prison, 
for less than three years, I will never feel free in my heart until I can show every human being the skills that I learned from masterminds that have allowed me to go from long-term prisoner to an individual who's currently controlling more than $1.8 million in real estate assets simply because they follow the path of masterminds just like I can from you, just like you can do. So I hope you enjoyed the simple uh, little CD and I hope for an opportunity where I can come and present to your audience live in person once again. Thanks again. I am Michael with michaelsantos.com. Grateful for an opportunity to share this story with you.